I am Guy G. I'm a London-based artist, and for this project, I'm currently working with postage stamps. The reason I decided to start with postage stamps was a happy accident. I was going down looking up anything Japanese graphic design related. If anyone's checked out the Japanese uh, manhole covers, they are unbelievable pieces of art. And I went down the Japanese movie posters and then matchboxes, and then I found this particular stamp, and it's completely the reason I started the project. When I can't comprehend of something artistically, that's when I'm incredibly impressed. So this um, is the first stamp that I'd ever done, and it was the first stamp I ever bought as well. It's Japanese and it's from 1898. Um, it's the only stamp I've not changed the colours of at all. I just think, it, I mean, it's slightly enhanced, but it, it's quite fantastic. Stanley Gibbons, of course, was the first, first people I wanted to approach, but I thought, I'll wait and I'll wait a bit longer because I don't have enough to show them. It was sort of, it was going to be the cherry on top of the cake working with Stanley Gibbons. And then they got in contact with me. So that was fantastic. So with the One Cent Magenta, I've actually done very little to it. I wanted it to be as true to the original as possible. But as you probably know, the original is a very dull, very dark colour. So I've enhanced the colour slightly, but then also overlaid the text from the Four Cent Magenta. Uh, so that you can read it, you know, it says British here, one cent here, Guyana with the emblem of the ship in the middle. Um, and this is the back, which arguably is more interesting and it's been signed by everyone who's ever owned it. So there's the shoe designer here, who I, I believe I'm right in saying is the last owner. This individual uh, is currently in prison, I believe for murder. Um, I think this emblem here is the French government or one of these is the French government. Um, but yeah, this being the back, uh, incredibly unique. You'd never usually find the back of a postage stamp particularly interesting. Um, but I think this is the more more intriguing part of the of the the two. So I'm I'm really not just saying this, but this is by far the most difficult stamp I've had to work with. Primarily getting the color right. When I'm doing my stamps, um, if the color's a bit wrong. It's not that it doesn't still look good, it's just not exactly how it looks on my screen, which is fine. And which means that each print run is slightly different, which I quite like. But with this stamp, I actually had to go to a professional printers across the river from here uh, to firstly get the color perfect, uh, to get the texture of it right, the finish of it right. The back of the stamp, of course, is something that generally speaking, I've, I've certainly never had to look at and hasn't ever been interesting in working with a stamp. And I'd argue that this is well, it's definitely the most most interesting stamp to work with, uh, purely from its history, um, but also probably the only stamp, certainly that I know of, that has an interesting back that's signed by all its owners and um, is really just as, just as interesting as the front. This is one of the most popular, which is originally a purple stamp from Hong Kong, which, as I've mentioned, I'll change the colorways. The different tones of blue, the different depths of blue, the red. I've also done a green one of this, which I've yet to release. And then this is an example of, I couldn't find a stamp from Indonesia, which I really loved. So I mixed together three stamps, uh, one from the Cook Islands, which is the green, it's the main, main body of it. And the center is an Indonesian stamp from the 60s, but that was a bit too modern for me. And then the date at the bottom, well, the numbers of which are taken from a stamp from Antigua. So, this is an example of a completely unique stamp. The process of making the stamps, I, I'll trawl through, no exaggeration, probably 10,000 stamps before I find one I like. And sometimes, let's say for Spain, for instance, it took me maybe 30,000 and I just went through and through for days and days trying to find a stamp I really liked. I'll then choose the one I think is gonna fit best into the rest of the collection. Sometimes it can take four or five hours to firstly find it, and then another four or five hours to do the color editing after I bought it and scanned it in at 3000 DPI. And then I'll make four or five different uh, colorways of that and pick the one I think is gonna work best. And quite often that's in blue or red, which going back to my favorite stamp, the original one, is again, exactly the same colorway. The process of the stamps is we use a multi-tool uh, to cut out the edge and I like it to be frayed. I don't like to use a pair of scissors. Firstly, it's incredibly difficult to cut such an intricate shape, especially the tiny ones with a pair of scissors. So this, this really makes it possible. Um, so you fray the edge as if it's been ripped from a stamp sheet and then you dye the edge with tea uh, and then it's float mounted into the frames. 
So Izzy, my fantastic assistant, will be showing how that's done. I'm desperate to buy this for my family because uh, we always go to Costa Rica. And that's what I love about these because everyone has a little piece of them. So anyone can relate to any country. And that's, you know, we had some lady the other day who bought nine for her husband and her husband lived in nine countries all over the world. And I thought that was a really, really nice idea. So we get a lot of customers like that and it's sort of, you end up falling in love with bits of like the stamp that you can relate to, which is great. It's a great project to be a part of. A good 90% of the sales of my art are through my website. Although if someone wants to order more than six or six or more, uh, then I, I give them discounts and they'll come to me directly through, through email. But otherwise, there are a few online art galleries that are showing the pieces, a few physical galleries. But yeah, Instagram's always been a, a great place to show my art. Thank you.